Hi, I'm Professor Baldwin, and today I'm going to teach you about rational equations. A rational equation is just an equation with one or more rational expressions. Well, what's a rational expression? It's really just a fancy math term for a fraction. So it's fractions, usually that have variables in them, and they're in equations, equations that we're going to solve. We have five steps to solving rational equations. The first step is probably one of the most important steps. You need to factor the denominators of every single rational expression, and then you need to identify any values for the variable that make that expression undefined. Remember, undefined is when your denominator would be equal to zero. Why do we care? We care because you can't divide by zero. So if you end up with a solution to the equation that would make that denominator zero, it's not a true solution and we need to throw it out. So first you're gonna factor, then you're going to identify the LCD so that you can simplify these. We're gonna multiply each side by that LCD and that gets rid of the fraction, the part that everybody hates. And then we usually end up with a linear type equation that we can solve. And then step five, we check our solutions. Let's take it slowly. Example one, we're just going to determine what restrictions we have for x. Remember, restrictions are anything that make the rational expression undefined or the denominator is zero. This first rational expression would be undefined when 2x minus 3 equals 0. And the second would be undefined when 5x equals 0. And the third is undefined when 3 minus x equals 0. We solve each of these and we'll have three possible restrictions on x. For the first, we're going to add 3 to both sides and we have 2x equals 3, divide by 2, and we get the restriction x equals 3 halves. So this is saying that x equals 3 halves. That tells us that when x is 3 halves, we get a denominator that's 0. So our restriction would be written as x cannot equal 3 halves. How about the second restriction? 5x equals 0. Divide both sides by 5, and you get x equals 0. So again, our restriction is going to be written as x cannot equal 0. And our last, we have 3 minus x equals 0. Well, let's add x to both sides. And we get 3 equals x, or x equals 3. So the restriction is x cannot equal 3. Okay, restriction should be a bit clearer now. So let's go on to solving rational equations. Notice that our first example does not have variables in the denominator. So we should have an easier LCD and we have no restrictions, right? If there's no variable, there's no way these denominators, three, four, and two could be zero. No restrictions on our x. Our LCD for 3, 4, and 2 is going to be 12. So we multiply all three terms by 12 over 1. So you're doing 12 over 1 for that first rational expression. And you're multiplying by 12 over 1 for the second. And 12 over 1 for the last. Everything has to be multiplied by that LCD or you alter the equation's meaning. So our first, when we multiply, let's rewrite it. We have 12 over 1 times x plus 2 over 3. Well, the 12 and the 3 in the denominator will simplify to 4. So this first term becomes 4 times x plus 2. Our second term, we have minus, and we're doing 12 over 1 times x minus 4 over 4. 
The 12 and that 4 in the denominator simplify to a 3. So our second term is 3 times x minus 4. And this is equal to 12 over 1 times 1 half. Well, the 12 and the 2 simplify to 6, so this is equal to 6. Now we're going to distribute through those parentheses. We have 4x plus 8 minus 3x. Remember, we have minus 3 times minus 4, which is a positive 12, and that equals 6. Now we're going to combine all of our like terms on the left. 4x and a negative 3x gives us x. 8 and 12 is 20, and that's equal to 6. We'll subtract 20 from both sides, and our solution is that x equals negative 14. And we'll write that solution as a set negative 14. Now let's look at example two. In example two, we have variables in the denominator. So we're going to have some restrictions. So what restrictions do we have? Well, notice the first denominator and the third denominator are just x. So the restriction, we solve x equals 0. And that restriction, x can't be 0. So our restriction is x cannot be equal to 0. Our second denominator is x minus 5. Well, when does that equal 0? Add 5 to both sides, and that would be 0 when x equals 5. So the second restriction is that x cannot equal 5. So we know our restrictions. Next is to determine what our LCD is. And remember the LCD is whatever the common denominator is between those three. We need to have an x represented and we need to have x minus 5 represented. This LCD represents all three of the denominators we're given. So now we multiply all three terms by that LCD. We'll have x times x minus 5 times that first term, 12 over x, minus x times x minus 5 times 12 over x minus 5, oops, equals x times x minus 5 times 2 over x. Now we can put this LCD over 1 if that makes you more comfortable. So then you can clearly tell you have a numerator and a denominator. And remember, you're simplifying factors that the numerator and the denominator have in common. The first term, they both have this x in common. So that leaves 12 times x minus 5. The second term, they have the factor x minus 5 in common. So that leaves minus 12x. And it's equal to that last rational expression the numerator and denominator have x in common, so we have 2 times x minus 5. Distribute through those parentheses. 12x minus 60 minus 12x equals 2x minus 10. Combine like terms on the left, and we get negative 60 is equal to 2x minus 10. We can add 10 to both sides, and we get negative 50 equals 2x. Divide by 2, and you get x equals negative 25. Now, x equals negative 25 is not one of our restrictions, so we know that it is the solution. And we write it in a solution set. Let's look at another example. 
First step is going to be to factor all of our denominators. Okay, the first term, nothing factors. It stays as y plus three. The second term, we have a GCF of y, and that leaves the binomial y plus three. And that third expression, nothing factors. Now we need to identify, do we have any restrictions? Remember restrictions, anytime the denominator would be equal to zero. So when y plus three equals zero, or the other possibility is y equals zero. The second term is y times y plus three. Both of those factors are accounted for by the first and the last rational expression. So our restrictions, we solve the first, and that's y equals negative three, would make that denominator zero. So the restriction is y cannot equal negative three. And the second is y equals zero, so the restriction is y cannot equal zero. Next is to find our LCD. Well, it's kind of given to us with that second term. It's y times y plus three. These two factors represent all three denominators. So we're gonna multiply every term by y times y plus three. We'll put it over one times the first term, y over y plus three, plus we have our LCD over one times two over y times y plus three. Remember we do this because it's going to simplify those rational expressions so that we don't have the fractions. Okay, what simplifies? This first one, the y plus three simplifies, and we have y times y, or y squared. The second, well, that was the LCD, y times y plus three, so everything simplifies, and we have plus two, equals the y's simplify in the numerator and the denominator, and we have six times y plus three. Notice that this is y squared plus two equals six y plus 18. We can combine all like terms onto the left hand side and we have y squared minus six y minus 16 equals zero. Here we ended up with a quadratic, so, or a trinomial. So we need to factor this. And to factor this, we're looking for the two numbers that multiply to negative 16 but add to negative six. Those would be negative eight and a positive two. Then you use that zero product property and I didn't give myself enough room. We have y minus eight equals zero and y plus two equals zero. The first, you add eight to both sides and you get the solution that y equals eight. The second, subtract two and you get y equals negative two. Eight and negative two were not in our restrictions, so those are our possible solutions. Eight and negative two. Let's look at one more example. Notice that our third term here is the whole number four, but a whole number can be rewritten as four over one. Now, the next step, factor everything. So let's factor those denominators. The first term stays as x over x plus six. There's nothing to factor. The second, 72 in the numerator, x squared minus 36, that's a difference of squares. So that's x minus six times x plus six. And then we have four over one. Now, what restrictions do we have? Well, 
we have x plus 6, oops, x plus 6 equals 0, or x minus 6 equals 0. Those are the possible factors in the denominators. So the first would solve to x equals negative 6. So the restriction is x cannot equal negative 6. And the second solves to x equals 6. So x cannot equal a positive 6 either. Now we find our LCD. Well, we're kind of given our LCD already. It's x minus 6 times x plus 6. So we're going to multiply everything by that LCD. x minus 6 times x plus 6 times that first term. And do that times the second term. It's a big LCD. X plus 6 times 4 over 1. Now we need to simplify. The first term, they share the factors x plus 6 in common. So we have x times x minus 6. I don't know why it gave me a number equals the second term, the LCD was that denominator. So that simplifies to 72. And our very last term, well that did not have that LCD. It was over one. So it's four times x minus six times x plus six. Now let's simplify without the parentheses. We have x squared minus six x equals 72 plus, well, remember this is four times that difference of squares, x squared minus 36. So that is 4x squared minus 144. Let's combine like terms on the right. So the left will stay the same for now. And on the right, we have 4x squared minus 72. Let's bring everything over to the right-hand side so that we have a positive x squared coefficient. So we're going to subtract x squared and we're going to add 6x to both sides. That'll be 0 is equal to 3x squared plus 6x minus 72 or 3x squared plus 6x minus 72 equals 0, if you prefer the 0 on the right-hand side. Now, do we have a GCF? Yes, 3 would be a GCF. So we can factor out the 3, x squared plus 2x minus 24. Notice we can divide both sides by 3. And we're left with just that trinomial, x squared plus 2x minus 24 equals 0. And to get the solutions, we need to factor that trinomial. Leading coefficient of 1, so we're looking for the two numbers that multiply to negative 24, but add to 2, and that would be a positive 6 and a negative 4. The zero product property tells us that x plus 6 equals 0, or x minus 4 equals 0. Solve each of these. We get x equals negative 6, and we get x equals positive 4. Now, we need to compare these to our restrictions from above. Remember, that x equals negative 6 was a restriction. So that gets tossed out. It's going to make our denominator 0, which we can't have. So our only solution here is going to be that x equals 4. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this video helpful, and I hope you'll watch some of my other videos.